Hello fellow engineers and welcome to another video on my channel. Today I would like to talk about some vanilla solutions you should have heard about before thinking about using a mod. Right after the intro. First of all, let me make clear, this is not a statement against mods. It's more like um, showing options for Xbox users uh, and their lack of options uh, for mods and scripts or uh, those people who want to push the vanilla game as far as possible. So now let's start with number one, the amazing WASD converter by Mr. Jimbo. The converter is a nice little device made from small block. It uses suspensions to trigger sensors so you can grab the input of your keyboard and use it to control um, other rotors, hinges or even suspensions and thrusters. It's not only an option to build reactive thruster flaps or something like moving panels, it may also be useful as a replacement for subgrid control scripts for suspensions or thrusters. You will find it in the Steam Workshop by searching for WASD input to sensor output module. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Let's say you're building something from sci-fi franchise like Transformers or Star Wars or Star Trek or anything else. And you're looking for images for your LCD in Space Engineers. So you're searching all the workshop and okay, stop. There's a simple solution. LCD image to text converter by Whiplash. For some reason, at the time of the creation of this video, the workshop link uh, for the image converter is not available any longer. But um, the external download link still exists, so I will link it uh, in the description below. The converter is a simple tool that lets you choose a uh, image and uh, the variant of LCD panel you want to put it onto. Uh, when you're done with that, you simply click on copy to clipboard. Back in Space Engineers, you enter the control panel of the LCD, turn content to text and images, put text padding and font size to the lowest, and the font to monospace. After that, you paste in the text from the clipboard and it will show up your image as you want it. Simple as that. Next one is something you may already know from another video. Um, number three, the orbital rotor. Since this already had a full video about it, here's the short form. By using double handrails, you are able to build a physical gap between these two blocks, but they are still counted as one solid grid. Which leads us to the option to let subgrids pass through and let them rotate around the main grid. Since there's no such block for small grid, this is a large grid thing only. The next one may be a partial solution for some of you when it comes to subgrid replication in survival. 
Number four, reverse grid size projection. Okay, let's say you have a large grid chip with a ton of small grid detailing, something like this. And you want all packed together in one blueprint. To make this less complex, let's have a look at this simple projector stand as an example. We all know if we are trying to feed this large grid projector with a small grid blueprint, there will be nothing appearing but an error. But if the small grid we want to have projected already is the subgrid of a large grid with less block count than the um, small grid itself, something interesting happens. Make the following work. We have to drag the multigrid at a large grid part and save it. If now loaded into the projector, another error appears and the projector decided to show the grid with the highest block count, which is the small one. The result is a large grid projector forced to show a small grid and this result is stable and you can also uh, copy paste it and uh, save it as another blueprint. But there's still one problem with it. Yes, you can use it to transfer subgrids, small grid subgrids uh, into survival, but uh, you won't be able to line it up correctly. So there's no way to make it uh, ready for automated welding. But anyway, at least it gives you the option to have a manually replicatable uh, copy of the subgrid in survival. The next one is not only an old thing, but more like the ancestor of vanilla solutions that can be used instead of a mod. Number five, hovercrafts. Building a vanilla hovercraft in Space Engineers is pretty easy. Thanks to an engine glitch that lets wheel suspension float, if placed with the wheel face down, the only thing you have to add is some thrusters and some gyroscopes. After that, you need to turn off and down every setting of the suspensions except strength, which should be at 100%. From my experience, uh, the variant this works best with is the 3x3 small grid suspension. Another one I would like to show is number 6, the mechanical running light. Light Rider. Kind of. This again is a simplified version to show how it is working. Basically, it's just some pistons moving a little flag forward and backward while the first and the last sensors are reversing the pistons, uh, the others are switching on and off the lights. One thing to know about this is that sensors have two functions, one for if triggered and one for if not. Overall, this is a great option to avoid the use of a script uh, for building something like a runway or the position lights of a ship or maybe Light Rider. If you have ever built some complex heavy small grid machinery you may have noticed there are ways to reach the limits of rotors torque. This is where number seven comes in. Small grid high torque rotors. Let's take this bucket excavator for our example. And to be honest about it, this is not an actual small grid only construction. Actually, it's the use of two large grid rotors in a small grid construction. One as the adapter and the other one as the actual rotor. Also, as you can see here, it uses a landing gear for stabilizing the adapter from clanging around. But since the most wanted update, there are some current problems with the large grid advanced rotor. First of all, it generates these 
small small grid heads only and second some of the setup points are reversed so these days it's a little bit tricky to build this but there are also two good news the first is for now you can find my version at the workshop and the second is on October the 22nd I will be in Prague at Keen Studios and I will ask them for a couple of fixes in person. Now let's get to the last one for today, number 8, Projected Force Fields. These hangar force fields made it into the video because many people ask me how I do them. The answer is stupidly simple. The hard truth is they are not doing anything. They are not airtight and apart from decoration purpose they are absolutely useless. The reason is they are nothing but projections of simple blue armor plates. But at least you can build cool looking stuff with it. Okay fellow engineers, that's it for today. I really hope some of these clues gave you some new ideas. Now there's one last thing in my own interest. As you can imagine, um, there's a lot of work to do uh, with cutting these videos besides uh, building stuff in Space Engineers. So it would be very helpful to see you like, subscribe and comment to help me with the fight uh, against these YouTube algorithms. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.